Many was on TV in four shows playing old and even new music. Björn was very busy and we now have brilliant updates and news on ABBA's Voyage project, the show and the recording process for the album. Today I want to collect all of those news that we got this month. This is our ABBA news roundup for February. Hey, so we continue to celebrate ABBA and their new project Voyage. They worked on this for many years and now they can sit at home and relax while they get all the love and recognition they deserve. And ABBA's female force is stronger than ever. With Agnetta and Frida on the forefront, there are two other women right beside them. Not Björn and Benny, those are men. I'm talking behind the scenes. The group's manager, Jura Hanser, and the manager of ABBA's polar music label, Mia Segelson. She is now celebrated on Billboard's list of women of the year in the category Music Publishing. With that, she is the first Swedish woman who ever made it onto that list. In a Swedish interview, she said how proud and happy she is about this recognition. She extends her gratitude to her team who worked on Voyage for such a long time and on top of that in complete secrecy. That's an achievement I'm still blown away by to this day. Mia Segelson also gave her appreciation to Jural Hanser, saying that if it wasn't for Jural, she wouldn't be where she is. She called Jural her mentor in work and life. She also confirmed that they have plans for ABBA's 50th anniversary next year, when they won the Eurovision Song Contest in 1974. And Voyage is a journey that never ends, so there is more. The massive technical team behind the show, Industrial Light and Magic, which was founded by George Lucas for Star Wars and is now part of the Disney Company, received the Visual Effects Society Award for Voyage for Outstanding Visual Effects in a Special Venue Project. They published a statement on their social network pages that they are thrilled to have brought home the award. In terms of ABBA's very own recording process for the Voyage album, we now have some brilliant evidence of when some of the recordings took place. This, I think, is worth a dedicated standalone video for this coming Sunday evening. We've had so many news this month that I'd like to focus on those for tonight. And there is more about Voyage. Björn has been super busy this month. In early February, he was in Berlin for an event called Music Meets Politics. He discussed the prospects for a better payment of music creators in the streaming world. Two weeks later, he was in Stockholm for the Grand Travel Award where he talked about the future of Voyage. New arenas will be built around the world and he confirmed that they now received a very interesting offer from Singapore. Las Vegas is still also a possible upcoming location for the show, but nothing has been decided yet. Two other interesting destinations were mentioned as being South America and Berlin, but Stockholm, he said, is unfortunately too small. The Voyage show in London is running for almost one year and altogether, 98% of all possible capacity was sold out so far. One day after the event in Stockholm, Björn sent a greeting to Ukraine Forum TV with words of hope to the people in the Ukraine. And finally, Björn also released two new episodes of his own show on Apple Music, doing interviews with Shania Twain and Alastair Campbell. In early February, we've had the sad news of the passing of ABBA's saxophone player Ulf Andersson, who played the iconic saxophone on I Do, I Do, I Do, I Do, I Do. We also received the sad news of the passing of Raphael, owner and host of the exceptional ABBA website, rafam.com. We pay tribute to both of these unique people who gave their talent to ABBA's fairy tale. On the 14th of February, we celebrated Valentine's Day with the ABBA Arena in London beaming in style and us celebrating the 50th anniversary of Ring Ring on the very same day exploring the history and making of ABBA's first number one single, released on that day in 1973. On that occasion, I had the honor of having an unforgettable conversation with Agnetha on the telephone. Hello, this is Agnetha of ABBA. Hello, Agnetha. This is Bobby's brother. Together with Agnetha and Frida, well, in spirit, if you will, we also toured through Stockholm 
visiting Frida's old apartment from the 80s and the iconic house that was used for Agnetta's solo album from 1975. At the end of February, we took a rare turn off from all things ABBA and celebrated the 80th birthday of George Harrison. And also this month, Björn and Benny were both seen at concerts, respectively. Björn visited the 10cc concert in Stockholm and met the band afterwards. They released a statement on their website saying that it was a pleasure and an honor to meet Björn Juleus. Benny, on the other hand, he simply went to his very own concert, ABBA Voyage in London. He was photographed together with the Voyage Band and opera singer Bryn Terbell. I want to give thanks to the International ABBA Fan Club, Helga and Anita, as well as the ABBA Intermezzo Fan Club, Regina, for sharing many of these news. Let us now take a look at Benny's appearances on Swedish TV. Last time we already mentioned that he would be participating on Sweden's popular TV game show, but we didn't know that he would actually be there for not only one episode, not two, but four episodes altogether. Benny, together with his orchestra, was the house band on these four shows. Now, what exactly does it mean to be a house band on that show? This is a game show on which the participants have to identify destinations of a journey with visual clues from a video and additional clues from the host. It's a fascinating concept and you get wonderful impressions not only of Sweden, but of other cultures all around the world. The music of the house band, for the most part, is actually quite embedded into the show itself. For example, they play a song from another artist and the participants have to identify that original artist or the name of the song. In every episode, Benny and his orchestra played two main songs with a special guest on vocals. On the first episode with Benny, they played Libertango and Phil Collins Against All Odds, Take a Look at Me Now with Lali on lead vocals and with Swedish lyrics written by her. A personal highlight was on the second episode with Benny, when they played one of my favorite songs from the Beatles, Drive My Car, with Swedish electro-pop duo Ikona Pop on lead vocals, played together in a fascinating mashup with a jolly instrumental, Jalopy. And Benny seemed to have fun playing a hooter. Ikona Pop and Benny Andersson's orchestra later performed Lady Gaga's Bad Romance. This happens to be a song that was once mentioned by Björn as his then current favorite song. There were several occasions during these shows where I just had to think of ABBA connections. Of course, Phil Collins reminded me of Frida's Something's Going On, produced by Phil Collins. In the second episode, they played Harpo's song Movie Star in the background of one of the videos. Again, I had an immediate connection to Frida who sang backing vocals on the Swedish version of that song. Movie star, movie star, oh, oh. In the same show, on another video, they played the jazz standard in the mood. I had to think of ABBA's tour of Europe and Australia, 1977, where they played that song as part of So Long. And in episode 4, on another video, there was a traditional Swedish folk song, which we just discovered last summer as being one of the songs that was recorded for Björn's Pippi soundtrack. Back to Benny's main songs on the show, the third episode had two of my personal highlights. Guest vocalist was Swedish singer Marie Bergman. They performed a heartfelt performance of Ted Jerestad's Come Give Me Love. Ted Jerestad was one of Sweden's most iconic artists. Benny describes him as a wunderkind. His first four albums were produced by Björn and Benny, with Agneta and Frida on backing vocals on many of the songs. On the show, they talked with Benny about his time with Ted. By the way, Marie Bergman actually sang a duet together with Ted Jerestad on his final album from 1994. And furthermore, Marie Bergman was a member of the Swedish pop group Family 4. They released a Swedish language version of ABBA's I Am Just a Girl in 1973, which uses ABBA's original backing track. I know these are many details and information, but I'm just fascinated how all of these artists are crossing each other's ways and somehow come together in this show. The second song performed by Benny and Marie Bergman was the beautiful Johnny Mitchell song, Both Sides Now. On the final show, Benny Anderson's orchestra was finally complete with Helen Sherholm and Tommy Sherbeck. They performed another fascinating mashup of two songs from Swedish composer of classical music, Hugo Alvin, a symphonic rhapsody and a Swedish polka. The final performance was the epic opera song Time to Say Goodbye, 
but with new Swedish lyrics written by none other than Björn Jolveus. The performance actually started with Benny playing a bit of When You Wish Upon a Star from Walt Disney film Pinocchio. What a beautiful moment to hear him play that melody on piano. Besides two main songs on each show, there was much more music played by Benny and his band. They opened each episode with a title song from the show and ended every show with their own song, Circus Finima. Throughout the shows, Benny and his band also played several tunes and jingles in between. Most of those tunes were familiar songs from him and his orchestra, but Benny also wrote two brand new jingles which were played in the first and final episodes. He titled them like you would title pieces for classical music. In episode 2, Benny also demonstrated an African instrument, and in the final episode, fittingly, one of the jingles was Our Last Dance from Benny Anderson's orchestra. What a great project this show was. It must have been so much fun putting together all those bits and pieces, embedding the music into the show, and, as so often, performing really such a vast variety of styles and with very different artists too. That's the versatility of Benny Anderson and his band. So much pure music through and through. And not only a musical journey through Bauer's legacy, but through the history of songs and artists worldwide from various eras. It was a joy seeing them back again. And if you're still here listening to me and all this rambling, wow, thank you really. And that's it for today, rounding it up for February. Björn on the road, Benny immersed into lots of music and strong power on the female front of ABBA and their ongoing success with Voyage. Let me know what you think about that. On Sunday evening, we'll dive into the revelation of the exact time and date of when ABBA recorded some of their album Voyage. All right, until then, hey though.